When you pay officers a good wage, you get quality applicants. Mm -hmm. We have PhDs that work here as officers. Yep. You know? I cannot think of any place where you could have five, you could have five full careers doing five totally different things and leave here just, oh, I've tried all these different things. I know I'm going to be in a wonderful part of the country. Mm -hmm. I know that I'm going to have a great union that fights hard for our benefits. Yep. Yeah, I just, I, there, and I mean this, this is not, there's, there's no other place, no other law enforcement agency that I would, would want to work for. Thank you for joining us for the Portland Police Bureau's Talking Beat. On today's special edition of the podcast, we're talking about recruiting and hiring of experienced police officers. PPB's recruitment officer, Patrick Johnson, sits down with two of these lateral police bureau members, Officer Aaron and Detective John, to discuss their perspectives of the bureau after working for other agencies. In this episode, they will discuss their firsthand experiences going through the hiring process, as well as their views on training, pay, benefits, culture, time off, and what they enjoy most about living in the Portland metro area. Now, let's jump into the episode. Hi, welcome to our podcast today. I'm Officer Patrick Johnson, one of the recruiters at the Portland Police Bureau. Over the last year, we've hired about just over 85 officers and we continue to hire. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about one of the types of officers we're hiring. We're hiring new hires right now that have no experience as an officer. We're also hiring laterals. Today, I'm joined by Officer Aaron and Detective John. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Oh, thanks. So let's just start with you, Aaron, because you're right here with me. Um, where did you come from? Uh, I came from a large agency on the west coast of Florida. Okay. How long were you there? About six and a half years. Six and a half years. Okay. How about you, John? Uh, I was a deputy in Louisiana, and uh, I came up here to go to college. After leaving that department, I was a reserve with Washington County for a bit, and then I got hired with the police bureau. Okay. And what made you come back up to Portland? You said up to Portland, so. Um, I had spent some time here in high school. My dad got relocated up here, and... Uh, and I would finish high school, and then I moved back home. So I lived there, um, and you know, after leaving here, you remember how nice it was. Um, I love the outdoors. It's a it's a wonderful place to live. Uh, the temperature here is much better better than it is down south. So um, that's why I came back. Just quality of life, I think. Just quality of life, things to do outside, and everything else like that. And yeah. okay, Aaron. Yes. What drove you up here? I uh, came up and visited. Portland and Seattle back in 2013-ish and just fell in love with just the Pacific Northwest, the climate, the uh, the city, uh, just kind of the, the way of life, I guess. Um, took a few more years. And then uh, in 2016, I applied uh, when there was when there was an open hiring and uh, just saw an opportunity to move my family out here for kind of just uh, better pay, better benefits, um, just a better place for us to, to raise a family. Okay, so you, you said you came up here to visit. Were, were you doing your vacation and visiting anybody up here in particular? Or you just picked a place on the map and went there. No, it was just we uh, we looked at the, we liked Portland and we hadn't been up here. It was we never been to the Pacific Northwest? Um, we had, we hadn't our kids yet, so it was just something kind of new for us to try. And we really absolutely just fell in love. And we came here in the middle of winter, um, but still just absolutely fell in love with with Portland and just that whole. Just the Pacific Northwest was just beautiful. Okay. Let's, you guys have both talked about that a little. Let's talk a little more about that. What do you guys like about Portland? So you're working 40 hours a week as a police officer. Majority of your time is not here as a police officer. What do you like doing off-duty, or what do you like about the Portland area or Oregon? Uh, I mean, in the city, there's tons of stuff, tons of restaurants, uh, places to go. I mean, it, when the weather's, you know, from – May to November, May to October, the weather's really beautiful. So being outside is easy for us. Um, you know, we have a nice, we have a big yard, so we can garden all year. Um, you know, there's a big, there's a nice break from the rain during the summertime. And then, you know, you get that nice fall weather and just going to the beach, going to the mountains. Um, went camping last weekend in Tillamook Forest. It was a lot of fun. So if there's something outdoors, you're close to the beach, close to the mountains, I mean, Traveling's easy. So, so you talk about that the Tillamook Forest. So, that's how far away is that roughly by car? Uh, I think it was about eighty miles. So, when you were in Florida, because that's something you could do, you could go uh, do all that stuff in a day and go camping with that close. To 
Not really. I mean, going to the beach, we were on, we were on the West coast and going to the beach wasn't, uh, was a 30 minute ride, nothing too bad, but, um, no, I mean, that was it. There was just the beach. You could go camping, mm-hmm. I guess, somewhere in, in one of the forests, but, uh, not the variety of, uh, outdoor activities that you have out here. Okay. I know a lot of people here in Oregon like to hike. They like to go camping. They like to ski. They do all stuff like that. John, where you were before, if you like to hike or camp, I don't know. Uh, is that something you were able to do really close to your where you, you worked before? Uh, Louisiana, like one thing that I love about being here is you can just go into the woods, right? And go hiking. Um, there is lots of poisonous snakes and Oof. spiders. No thanks. And, uh, yeah, there's, uh, alligators. Um, I think down South is really pretty, you know, going on a, you know, boat ride through the swamp, but the, uh, just being able to just be out there for a long time and enjoy it. Um, I love to camp and, when I would camp down there, I'd drive to North Carolina, which took me a whole day to get over there. Oh, wow. Um, and so uh, here, I mean, I can drive 45 minutes, and there's amazing uh, national forests to go camping in. Um, I just – the – yeah, the things that you can do here is – like you said, I mean, down south there's the, you know, the beach of the Gulf of Mexico, but um, it's kind of – it's kind of it. And here, you know, you can go to the beach if you want. Um, you can go hiking, you can go, uh, do all kinds of really awesome things. And it's, you're usually looking at like maybe an hour or two hour drive for awesome stuff. So. Okay. So on top of the outdoors, the climate you guys have talked about, one of you mentioned pay. I'm going to compare a little bit to your other agency. I'm not going to say what your other agencies are because we're not going to do that. But can you explain a little bit the differences of like your other agency, maybe in like pay, health benefits, something like that compared to what we have here an offer in Portland. So for me, the the pay was a major part of it. Um, I guess the best way to compare it would be um, previously where I worked, I would have to work uh, off duty or extra duty jobs to kind of uh, supplement my income. Um, here, I've in the six and a half years I've been here, I've never had to work an extra duty job. They're available, but mm-hmm. I've never ha- had to, which has been nice. Um, the healthcare benefits are. Really, really impressive. Um, had uh, two of my kids here, and that's been zero dollars out of pocket, which is really, I mean, our health benefits are phenomenal. One of the things about having a child here in the city of Portland, um, what's one of the benefits that you get? Oh, well, uh, so I've had, like I said, I've had two of my children here, and uh, you get the city offers you six weeks of. Uh, paid time off where the city covers your time. It's not taken out of your vacation bank or anything like that. And you, so with my, uh, with the middle child that I've had, I was able to take six weeks off, um, right out of, uh, the advanced Academy, which was great. And then, um, with my youngest, I was, I took six weeks of, uh, the time that the city gave me. And then I, we accrue a lot of vacation and various other times. So I was able to take actually three months total off wow. with my youngest child. And that's been, was, it's been really great to just be able to see her from growing up. And you, just even during COVID times, it was, you know, being able to be home with her. So you, you work to live, not live to work here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. John, how about you um, comparing like pay and benefits to your other agency? Oh, the, How about this? Maybe professionalism too that the police bureau has compared to other agencies. Yeah, the the pay here is uh, is much better. The benefits we used to have to pay for part of our insurance. I was making you know twenty five thousand dollars a year there uh, if I didn't work overtime, and so if I wanted to make money and do things, I had to work extra hard to get that. The professionalism, I think that it it seems like when uh, officers talk about their education here now. Uh, it seems like everybody me has a master's degree. Like the people here are extremely smart. Uh, they're a lot smarter than I am sometimes, I think. Uh, <laughs> but it is uh, super professional. It's almost like a completely different job. Uh, and I remember working down there and I remember looking at the pay scale up in Portland because uh, my parents still lived up here. And I remember thinking like they pay so much they'd never hire, you know, a cop from the South like mm-hmm. me. Um, and the reality is, is that they needed officers and I probably should have applied all the way back then. Um, and so it was, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost like a, a different job. The people here are completely different. 
yeah, it's like a whole, I'm in a whole different world. Okay. I love it here. It's when I uh, left there, I was actually not even sure that I wanted to remain in law enforcement. Um, I mean, there's people there that I loved a lot and it wasn't a bad experience to be there, but um, it is after, you know, having come up here, I, I actually, I didn't even, you know, apply for this job initially. I was working um, for Department of Community Justice and one of my coworkers when Portland came for their two week where they do a rotation to see what the other agencies, government agencies and law enforcement, um, criminal justice do here. Uh, she was like, you'd be a good Portland cop. And I said, you know, I, I did that and I'm not really interested in it anymore. Uh, the department that I work for down south was pretty close minded uh, mm -hmm. and it definitely didn't uh, it, it that wasn't OK with me. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, one of my coworkers, uh, she got my email address and said, I signed you up for the test and I just showed up. I didn't even really, you know, I just assumed that all law enforcement was going to be the same way. Not, not as progressive as the Portland police bureaus. Yeah, absolutely not. And, um, I came in for the interview and, uh, the other places that I applied from, you know, uh, being full-time law enforcement and then doing reserves. I went into that interview, those interviews, you know, like kind of ready to say what I think they wanted to hear. And I came into the interview here and I, I was just completely open and honest about the way I felt about everything. And I remember leaving that, like, I don't, I don't think they're going to pick me. Right. Mm -hmm. And they did. And, uh, my old employer that I work for, uh, here in Portland, department of community justice, they, they uh, were nice enough to say, Hey, look, your job is here if you want it. And, uh, if, and so, you know, when, when uh, I got off my probation here, you know, I was waiting for like one time to see any unprofessional stuff happen. Yep. I mean, there was gratuity problems down there. There was officers constantly getting in trouble or deputies constantly getting in trouble for, for doing things. A lot of them, you know, uh, a lot of them were doing things to survive. You know, one of the guys I work with robbed a bank down there. <laughs> like, Just because the wages were so low. It was so low that people had to come up with other ways to survive. I mean, everybody there worked at Walmart uh, when they were off. Wow. And uh, that was, it was, and you were lucky to get those Walmart jobs, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, you, uh, you would get that and then they would keep you. And like, you don't, you know, you don't really see the, the, the contrast. Like when you pay officers a good wage, you get <clears throat> quality applicants. Mm -hmm. We have PhDs that work here as officers, yep. you know, we have people that went to Ivy league schools, top of their class that came here. And so, I went my whole probation. I remember thinking to myself, if I see anything unprofessional, if I see people, um, if I see people stealing stuff or, you know, anything. Something if I, you don't want to be a part yeah, of. Yeah. If people are saying, uh, you know, racist comments, homophobic comments, I'm out. And I, I've never seen that here. Um, and it, yeah, it, it changed my mind. And like, and I mean this 100%. Uh, her signing me up for the test was one of the best things that's ever happened for, to me. I, I I love working here. I make great money and I live in a great place. So it's a great story. Yeah, I'm gonna ask a little bit about the application process. Uh, John, you were already here, so Aaron, I'm gonna ask you a little more about this because yeah. you were in a different state. Yes. Can you just take me quickly through how it was through the process. You don't have to take me step by step, but just tell me you were able how much you were able to do there and versus here and I can fill in where things have changed now for our process. Yeah. So at the time uh, I applied in January, I think the hiring opened up January, 2016, like right around the first or second. Yeah. Uh, the one thing that I was able to do was we were able to get the like personal history questionnaire, all your like background stuff. Mm -hmm. So I already had that completed. So I was able to just submit that on like wow. the first okay. or the second. Um, after that, I was contacted by a background investigator and they basically just gave me like a quick timeline. I think they, I think I came in March for an oral board okay. and um, meeting with like the personnel sergeant and my background investigator kind of go over my personal history questionnaire. And I think at that time, that's when I filled out, I, I think I filled out the paperwork for the background for the psych, okay. but I didn't take yeah. the psych yet. And then it was a few, I mean, it went, I, I was kind of alluded to that I would be starting sometime in the summer of 2016. Um, and that time kind of came and passed and it was, I guess, people were being pushed back to the street because of low numbers. Mm -hmm. So uh, I didn't get called till August to come back out for my psych and my medical. 
So I had to fly back out here for psych and medical. And, uh, that was kind of, I mean, it was hard, mm -hmm. right? Like we weren't, I wasn't making a lot of money. I was basically living on credit cards at the time. Um, just trying to make ends meet. So flew back out here, did my, uh, psych and medical, found out I passed. And then background was really good. They kind of gave me an idea of like, what would be a good start date for me? So I was also in the process of trying to sell a house. Mm. So I kind of, I had to wait. I didn't want to put my house up for sale before I got hired. So basically as soon as I found out that I passed the psych and was given my offer of employment, I uh, basically, we put the house on the market immediately, like before I flew back, mm -hmm. lucky enough that the house sold very quickly. And the start time was actually really flexible. They basically gave, gave me uh, whenever the pay periods were like, Hey, you can start at any of these pay periods. So we packed up, we, Sold everything, whatever we couldn't fit into a 12 by 6 U-Haul trailer, which we taped out in our house. Perfect. Um, and <laughs> hitched it to our yeah, hitched it to our car. And uh, basically, I, le I, got, I left Florida September 16th, and I started here September 21st. So wow. drove across the country, um, got settled in our apartment uh, on like a Monday, and I started here on a Thursday. Oh, I'm glad to have you. Yeah. The process now is just a little bit different. So now it's about four to five months for new hires through the whole process. Laterals could be a little quicker just because they've kind of been through everything. And you don't have to come out here until the end of the process um, for the psych and medical. The good thing is we do offer a relocation uh, assistance up to $10,000. And you, that's paid back after you're hired. So you could use some of that to come out for your psych and medical. Did you get any relocation assistance? Yeah. they. So I'll just you really impressed. It felt like I was applying more for like a, a private sector job where I was able to use my experience and my time already as a police officer to kind of negotiate a better, a, a pay scale that was more in line, uh, with my experience. Um, they paid for $2,500 in moving expenses. Um, I was able to get a, there was a hiring bonus at the time. So I got a $10,000 hiring bonus, which just paid out. It was like a, a $6,000 bonus and then two $2,000 bonuses over the last they got the last one a couple of years ago. And right now we have a $5,000 okay. hiring bonus. So the bureau during my hiring, I was able to get the, my vacation bank was given like a hundred hours right when I got off probation, a vacation. And then I accrue my sick time, vacation time as a, even though I've only been here at Portland for six and a half years, uh, I accrue it at like a 13 year okay. uh, officer rate. So it takes all your experience. Yes. And so, and I'm a, and Again, I, I'm a top top police officer okay. here, so uh, that's that's hugely beneficial. So, John, because Aaron talked a little bit there, we'll talk to you about this next, and then come back to Aaron. How does the amount of training here at the Portland Police Bureau compare to where you were before? Now, Aaron already alluded to the Advanced Academy, which is an extra ten to thirteen, twelve ish weeks, depending on how the scheduling is in addition to the basic academy through the state, which is 16, how do you compare the training here to your other agency? Um, you go to two academies here unless you're lateraling over. So if it's somebody that's new that's coming here, they have to go to basic. Um, that's actually a great time. You know, if you want to save some money too, you can live there if you decide to. Um, and uh, yeah, but the training, I mean, uh, this is, might sound like a joke and things have, might have changed because, you know, I've been with the bureau now for, uh, almost 13 years. And so, uh, but you'd ride with a coach for two weeks, you know, and they gave you a gun and then you were supposed to figure it out. And then if they wow. decided they were going to keep you there, then they sent you to the police academy. And like I said, I don't know how things are there now, but it's, uh, the training here has been, it's, it's been awesome. Um, it really feels, I mean, it's very professional. It seems like it's, you know, uh, driven by stuff that works. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just super professional here. Um, and also the training that the Bureau will send you to, I mean, down there, the idea of putting in for a bomb school or something was just not even something that you consider. Right. Okay. And so, uh, here, I mean, you can find the training and go pitch that to your supervisors and say, this is something that I'm interested in doing. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a completely different experience. What about you? You you came in um, straight from Florida and went through a two-week course of material. Yes. And then went to an advanced academy. How did that compare to your other agency in addition to how much training we get per year on top of like what John said, stuff you want to put in for like a bomb school? 
Yeah. <clears throat> so I, I guess I was pretty, I, I worked for a very large agency and the training program there was excellent. Um, my, my, my first police academy, I think was almost, it was straight through. Um, I think it was like maybe 40 weeks. I mean, it was extremely long. Um, was that military? It was a pair. Yeah. Okay. It was a paramilitary, uh, style of police academy. So and- the one thing I was super impressed with here was, so I came, when I got hired, they were able to use, because I had, uh, my experience as law enforcement in Florida, I was able to meet the requirements that I did not have to go to the basic academy here in Oregon. However, I had to do what was called PCOT. I think maybe, I'm not sure if it's still called that, but um, basically it was to bridge that gap with legal and uh, kind of the, uh, like our circuit court and how kind of laws are applied out here on the West Coast. So what they basically did was I had the option of going for two weeks down to DPSST or they would send me the material and I would study on my own time with my coach. And I chose this, the second one. Um, so I basically studied uh, at the time. And then there was a, I had to go down to, to Salem to DPSST. I took a test on a computer, uh, an equivalency test. I passed it. Um, and then I just continued on my way. Uh, I was I went out to the road first. I did like November, December uh, with a coach out here in East Precinct. And then I went to the Advanced Academy for – I think 10 or 11 weeks and then back out, but very seamless. Um, and it's the, the advanced Academy is great. It's an adult learning environment. It's not paramilitary at all. Uh, you're treated like an adult, uh, which was important to me. I mean, I get it. There's people from all different backgrounds, but like John said, there's people with PhDs and law degrees and people who've had a whole other careers, right? They're not just hiring 23 year olds. They're hiring 35 year olds. So having that adult learning environment, um, and that adult learning experience where you're not, where you're just treated like somebody who's has the ability to learn new ideas without being screamed at was yeah, really treated great. like an adult. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I know it sounds bizarre, but you are treated like it's not coming from a paramilitary learning background, which for me, I was 23 when I became a police officer. So at the time that it worked for, it was perfectly mm-hmm. fine for me. I'm not ex military. Um, that learning environment worked and I enjoyed my very much enjoyed my career on the West coast, of Florida. And that was a big concern for me coming here is, is that like I had already been to two police academies, mm-hmm. the post in Louisiana and then the reserve DPSST reserve Academy okay. over in Washington County. And so uh, I was older when I applied to Portland, I was in my thirties. And again, part of that, like testing the job to see if I like it. Uh, I, you know, I, I didn't want to be treated like a kid cause I'm an adult with life experience and uh there was none of that. I mean, the Advance Academy here is it. It's it's actually fun, you know. Down there, yeah. the police academy down there. Every day, I was like, "Am I going to fail?" Yeah. You know, and I was uh, it like it. It didn't make for a good learning environment for me because I was more focused on the failing than actually understanding, you know, and learning. Um, so the Advance Academy here for somebody that's from uh, a different agency, it's actually you know, it's actually fun. That's You'll fun. actually enjoy it. Um, and again, kind of going back to the training, like I said, you rode with the coach for two weeks down there. The probation here is 18 months and some of that you do by yourself, but a lot of the, the process to learning, I think is it's, uh, it's much longer, but it also, uh, it, it makes it so you actually, when you're out there by yourself, you know, you're, you are, uh, super comfortable if you're brand new and, uh, I, you know, I, I was an FTO uh, before I promoted, and um, and the FTOs that I work with, like they, they'll know that you're from another agency, and they, you know, there's no our ways better. Mm-hmm. It's very, I mean, they're happy to have you here, um, and it's, I, I, it's not really, it's not a stressful situation. It's nothing like it was down there. Okay. Um, it is, uh, it's, it's, it was actually a lot of fun to be on probation, and I was dreading it when I, when I got <laughs> hired here. And you mentioned eighteen months. So eighteen months is a new hire. We don't cut them over as a lateral. You had gone back to school, so it took a little longer, but technically, in my opinion, you've lateral. You came from another agency, but um, so mine yours was, was a year. Mine was a year. Okay. Uh, it did get extended because I took my, the six weeks of baby leave, so yeah. you get extended by about six weeks. But um, at least for me, going through FTO was enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Um, I was lucky where uh, our VCAD program is the same program I came from. So I was very familiar with the computer program. It was enjoyable. I rotated through uh, north and east uh, afternoons and days. And I was treated like an adult. I was treated like a lateral, which made me feel good. I I understood that there was still a learning experience. But, you know, I'd 
I'd only left my agency for, you know, it only took me, I retired, resigned on the 16th and I started here on the 21st, not a huge gap in, uh, you know, missed training. So, and it was great. You know, I, I really felt my sergeants were great. Everybody, if I was confused, if there was an issue on a call, like I never felt like I was let, being hung out to dry. Yeah. I would say that, you know, uh, the other agency I worked for, like a big part of probation there was like, you know, they wanted to know if you were a good fit to work with whatever crew you were at and they'd weed you out if they didn't think you were a wow. good fit. And I know there's even some departments like that here in Oregon, you know, where I've, uh, and so, uh, I mean, here, I don't think that they're, you know, from being an FTO and having gone through it, I just don't, there's none of that here. There's no, it isn't like you're going to have to prove that you're one of us and you go along with our culture. It's not, I mean, we, everybody here is just completely different. That's another thing mm -hmm. that I love about it is people here, everybody comes from a different background, you know, and uh, uh, it's, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's, it's great. So another thing that I want to hit on that, we kind of talked a bit, a little bit about where we're talking about camping and stuff like that, but home life. I'm not going to go too deep into it, but home life has an effect of here we work 40 hours a week, four 10-hour shifts, three days off in a row. It doesn't rotate. Can you explain a little bit how your home life was based on the hours you worked before, if there was any home life or if you had any time to do anything based on the shifts you were? Because I know every agency has different types of shifts. But I know majority of the officers here like the four tens with the not rotating days off. You don't have to pull a calendar out to see if you have Saturday off four months down the road. Yeah. Uh, in Louisiana, I work 12-hour shifts. I'd work, you know, three days and then I'd be off two days. And then um, uh, so it was – it was and it, the, the schedule also – it rotated, so you would work two two weeks of days and then two weeks of nights. So it was fair for everybody, um, and so that was uh, that was very difficult. Like getting my sleep together, um, I don't sleep great to begin with. Everything mm -hmm. kind of has to be perfect for me, and just having a schedule, you know, um, you know. Also, we work forty hours a week. You can work overtime if you want. Um, but we also get wellness time, mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I get to work out four times a week and it's not on my own time. So that's an extra four hours that I have uh, at home. So that is one hour of your 10 hour shift. Yes. You get a workout. Yeah. So and paid it, for by this city. Yeah. It's unbelievable. You know, I do it at the end of my day and it, it helps me clear my mind from whatever calls that I had during the day. I get to, to go home and it's like my decompression time. And like I said, I mean, it's another four hours a week that, and it, my workout schedules have been much more consistent too. You know, a lot of times it's hard for people to make time mm -hmm. and the bureau is like, you know, you can, this is your hour. You can, you know, you can, if you want to keep working, keep mm -hmm. working. If you don't want to do wellness, uh, otherwise you can go to the gym. It's, it's fantastic. And it's a whole mind and body thing. So it's hopefully yeah. help making you a better person overall. Aaron, what about you for the shifts you worked with trying to get some type of home life versus what you have now? Oh, the, the three days off in a row consistent is great. I work 12s as well with the three days off, two days on. There was no change in hours. So, but the 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. or 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. was brutal. Um, coming here, I went, I love the four tens. Uh, when I was off probation, I requested night shifts because it was 10 p.m. to 8 a.m., which at the time worked really well for my life. Uh, the good thing about night shift here was I was able to get Saturday, Sunday, Monday off within about a year. Wow. So I had weekends off. So I've been here six and a half years, be seven years in September, uh, except for about maybe 12, 14 months. When I first got cut loose, uh, I've had weekends off. That's the thing now. Someone gets hired today. We're hiring so much that you can quickly gain seniority fast like that. Yeah. It was more important for me to have – the weekends off and work nights than to be on a different schedule. So mm -hmm. um, I worked, that was my schedule until I went to detectives. And the 12s that you have was one of those where you have to pull out a calendar and see where you're, oh, what days off you're off. Yeah, totally, like, totally. You, August, whatever, am I off? This? Well, yeah, and we bid every year. So you could have a whole, you could have something planned out, but you could be, if you, you could get bumped to like the different shift mm -hmm. and then all your days off would switch, right? Everybody would be, everything would be backwards. Yeah. Um, Right, we still do bid. We still do bids here occasionally, um, but one I like that there's a 45 day, like if you get if you're gonna get bumped mm -hmm. by somebody with more seniority, at least you have 45 days. You've no, you have knowledge, right? You have time to kind of plan. I I've never been bumped, 
I've, you know, like I said, I went to night shift, went to, had weekends off and never got bumped off my weekends. Um, and that's been really nice. I know if you move around a little bit more, but mm-hmm. if you want to move different precincts, uh, it's all pretty easy here. You just putting a transfer request and 45 days later, as long as it's approved, you're where you want to be. Yeah. I mean, I got, I got hired and they were actually full and I got, I mean, there's so many opportunities here to do different things. And so, uh, you may be low on seniority, but you know, you can work your way into a neighborhood response team. I mean, there's opportunities out there for officers where they can also get good time off. And so it's, uh, I, it's not all based off of how long you're here. Right. I mean, you can work really hard and achieve, you know, when I came here, because at Louisiana, we had to rotate so it was fair for everybody. When I came here, I wasn't too sure about the seniority thing. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, is that, like, I'm I'm a pretty loyal person to my job. And so, you know, if you're here for a little bit, you have that. And you can, like you said, you can count on it. You don't have to worry about getting bumped off or something. Yeah. Um, and so, and talking about the vacation here, like, uh, I wasn't too worried at my agency about taking vacation. And that's not a good thing. It's because we only got two weeks a year. Oh, wow. Um, wow. The vacation here is, it's ridiculous. Every year you yeah. gain more time. Yeah. It's fantastic. I mean, honestly, uh, I like to travel. Yeah. Uh, and I'm when I'm traveling to other countries, they're always like, you know, you Americans don't get a whole lot of vacation. You're always working. And when I tell them how much vacation they get, they're like, oh, my gosh, that's, yeah. you know, that's like our vacation. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's – it's. Uh, yeah, I think my my last year on nights was the same year that my my last kid was born, and I took off the all the time at the beginning of the year uh, when she was born, and then I think starting in August I went down to like because they basically open up the vacation book. Yeah. You pick any days that are available, so I went down to like a three day work week, and I just took off every Tuesday at the beginning of my week for like two months, right? I've, and I still have tons of I mean uh, yeah. most John's over usually. Oh yeah, I'm I'm three weeks over right now. So John yeah. has to take three weeks of vacation yeah. over, just, and that's that's I have two years of holidays banked on top of that. Yeah. That's I'm three weeks over how much I can roll over next year. And so how that accumulation works is the beginning of each year we get forty hours of personal time. Anytime you want to take off, so that's four days off. And the dependent care is really nice. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, you get sick time with the dependent care. You also have ten holidays, and if you work those holidays. Do you get 15 hours? If it's your regular day off, you get 10 hours. Everything starts adding up there. If you just want to take the day off, it's your work day. It's just a net. But then you start off at 112 hours of vacation. It just goes up four point plus hours each year on top of that and just keeps adding up. So you, you do gain a lot pretty fast. I can literally take months off, yeah. you know, which is just, it's crazy. It's a good feeling to have. Yeah, and it's off. nice. I, you know, I like having that there. So yeah. if some opportunity comes where I can go somewhere for a long time, you know, I can, I can jump on that. It's just, yeah, it's, uh, it's fantastic. The vacation time. Yeah. I already took off. I took off the first week of June. I'll be gone I'm here for two weeks and I'm gone for another two weeks. Uh, as long as there's availability, like you can, there's plenty of time to take. Yeah, and you know, a, a guy that, that's in our office, he's getting ready to go on his third trip abroad, you know, this year. Wow. So it's uh, – Wow. It's, so, uh, yeah, it's great. With a good pay wage yeah. and a lot of time off, you can go have some fun. I was talking to you guys a little earlier, and the one thing that made you guys really happy and John smile a lot over there, I was talking about the opportunities at the Portland Police Bureau. Can you start, John, talking about the opportunities, opportunities you had – and what's available at an agency like this size compared to other agencies? Yeah, I think the the coolest thing to me is is that like with hard work, I feel like you could achieve anything you wanted here, right? I mean, even if there's like a position that they don't have, you know, you could make the case for that position. I think all of us have gotten really good opportunities. Um, you know, when I came, I went to night shift and there was no partner cars at the time. And, you know, I wrote a letter to my supervisor saying this is why I think my district was the it was, you know, one of the busier ones in the whole city. And uh, they said, you know what, you guys both work hard. You can have that partner car. I had that. And then they started a foot patrol unit uh, a little bit after that. And I was able to work myself to great days off, you know, with three years on, I get, you know, the weekend off. Um, I'm working noon to 10 o'clock at night, which was a great schedule because I uh, you know, I can sleep in. Um, and so, uh, and then, you know, from that, I was a school resource officer. Uh, and then I went and started working in child abuse, which, 
um, is a position that Aaron has right now is mm -hmm. my old position. It didn't exist, you know? Yeah. And so we were expanding the unit that we were in and I had some ideas and uh, they actually created that position because they thought that we needed to be going out. It was doing knock and talks on okay. cyber tips that we got. Um, and so I've left and th that they've kept that position. And so I've talked to a bunch of other officers who, uh, which he has my old job, but he's a million times better than I was at it. <laughs> <laughs> a million times. It's not even close. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, it's uh, we have officers here that have come up with all kinds of ideas and they'll, they'll write an operation plan and it gets approved and they get to do it. Like the other agencies that I was with, it was like, really like you are going to follow the rules here. And this is what uh, the, this is the way that it's, it's been because it's always been that way. Uh, and it was, you know, their way or the highway. And here it's just like with hard work. I mean, that's, that's what I, you know, I, t I talk to people about that all the time. Like, if you want to work your way somewhere here, you put in the work and you are definitely going to get there. You don't have to worry about politics. Mm -hmm. The department that I work for, it was all, you know, what you'd done for the sheriff's campaign and and who you knew if your family member worked there. Uh, I knew nobody here. Um, and great things have happened to me. So, Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's, I'm in a unique position. So when I, I've been a, from a FTO here, I'm an ECIT. Um, I think John, you're one of the one of the earlier ECITs. So, and going to those trainings was super easy. Like, I put in for it and I got it. Um, one of the more unique opportunities I had was uh, there was a rash of arsons in East Portland where I was working, and I realized even though we do have arson investigators, that I knew nothing about it. So I put in for a training class uh, down at DPSST. And I got approved for it. And so I was one of the only cops in this fire training class to kind of learn more about arson. Um, but even beyond that, I'm so I'm an officer, but I'm assigned to detectives. So uh, and John is actually my partner. And I and when I was applying for this job, I actually spoke to John, who I didn't know at the time and was kind of inquiring about it because I put in for this position. Um, so John and I are assigned to the ICAC or Internet Crimes Against Children unit. And. Uh, John, like I said, held that position before and did such a great job at it that they made it permanent. Yes. And when he was promoted, uh, they were looking for a replacement. So I called John to kind of get an idea about it. Um, I interviewed and was able to get the spot. And then when John uh, was able to come back, he actually was able to come back to ICAC. And now he, we're partners. So it's just been a great opportunity, right? Uh, you can have a partner if you want. If you don't want one, you don't want one. But John and I have kind of found a really w good working relationship and – our supervisors are great. They listen to our ideas. Um, they're really supportive. So the unit originally had one detective working these crimes half their time, and now there's five full-time people wow. there and a full-time analyst. I think that ha feeling like your supervisors and your command listen and respond to the, you know, the amount of work that's being created, it feels good. You don't feel like you're not you're being left out, right? We're able to show that, you know, there's much more work to do and. Uh, they respond by making sure we have the resources to accomplish our goals. Um, they support any training that John and I want to go to. They buy uh, – if we want to try out software, uh, they're supportive of that. If we need meetings, they help arrange those. So anytime we have an issue, I felt we we feel heard. Yeah, I think the word that sums everything up is just supportive. Like they – the supervisors here are like, you know, what can we do to make you, uh, you know, better? And so, again, you put in you put in the work. And you're going to be supported here, hundred um, percent. Yeah, it's it's a it's a great environment uh, to work in. Another thing <clears throat> when I was talking to you guys that made you both light up, and we won't mention restaurants, is the food scene in Portland. What do you what do you think about that? Um, you know, coming from New Orleans, is Southern food's pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and so uh, when I came to Portland, I really wasn't expecting to be blown away by the food. Uh, and, you know, Louisiana has great Southern food. Um, there's great Vietnamese food there, too. But outside of that, it's not a super diverse place. Uh, and the thing that's great about Portland is, is that uh, whatever type of food that you're into uh, – is here and there's like high end, you know, James Beard nominated uh, chefs that run those restaurants. Um, and, you know, there's food out there that you've never tried before. And then you're going to get like a legit version of that food. You know, like I said, I like to travel. Mm -hmm. You know, you can go get authentic Chinese food here that, you know, when I went to China, it was it was the same thing. And so it's uh, just a diversity of food here and the quality is is fantastic. And then, you know, like if you like seafood, um, 
I know people down south are going to hate me saying this. Like the oysters up here are way better than the oysters wow. in the Gulf of Mexico, if you ask me. Uh, and uh, Dungeness crab is way better than blue crab. Yeah. Uh, and so it's, uh, yeah, the food here is is fantastic. I mean, yeah, we get exci- we're excited at lunch every time. Yeah, like, as partners, you guys get to go together, right? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've tried. I mean, yeah, the food scene here is it, it's very impressive. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I mean, I, we go out quite a bit. We go to a Thai place at 20th and Burnside. That's just absolutely phenomenal. But yeah, if you, if anything you want, I mean, every, I cannot think of anything you can't get something really well somewhere here in the city. And I think that what makes Portland unique is like the, the neighborhood layout. So like it's instead of having just the city center, right? There's Woodstock, Alberta, Selwood, and these, all these neighborhoods have all their, their own unique restaurants. There's little tiny areas that, you know, if you go to like a uh, 28th and Gladstone, there's a ton of restaurants over there and it's mm-hmm. kind of hidden away. But I mean, anywhere you go, you're going to get good food, good drinks. Um, you know, I guess the weather's perfect right now. So sitting outside. So it's a great place to live. Okay. One last thing for you guys. If there is an officer that's either a new hire or a lateral like you guys that is thinking about making a switch, why Portland? So for me, it's, uh, I would say the opportunity. We're the largest agency in Oregon. Um, you get, you get the ability to try anything. So I'm, I'm on our crisis negotiation team. Um, so our the team's number one in the country. So I get to work with CERT. I get to work with the bomb guys. I get to go out on pretty exciting things all the time. If that's what you're, if that's what you want, this city and this agency has that ability to make that happen for you. And the support that comes with that. So you're not just kind of given a position and then no support. You're given that position and then all the training that comes along with it. Again, I'm this unique opportunity where I'm an officer in a detective spot. So I get to do, I still get, I'm still an officer, but I get to be in detectives. I get to experience detectives. If I want to try something else, I have that ability to go try something Mm -hmm. else. Uh, And I think that ability just to try new things, there's always, positions opening and opportunities and shifts. I cannot think of any place where you could have five, you could have five full careers doing five totally different things and leave here. Just, well, I've tried all these different things. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, even creating new positions for you, if you work hard, you know, um, I would say somebody coming from another agency. I mean, down there in Louisiana, I didn't think I had a shot getting hired. I just looked at the pay scale in yeah. Portland, and I was like, they're not going to hire some dumb young cop like me, you know? And uh, the thing that's great about it here is, is that, like I said, it's fair. You don't have to worry about politics. Uh, it's just all you have to do is just work hard, and you'll get you'll get great things in your career. Uh, yeah, the opportunity here is great. You know, when I had left Louisiana, I wanted to work, uh, I wanted to work uh, federal law enforcement for the Forest Service. That's why I started going to school. Uh, and uh, I, you know, at the time I was thinking about different federal agencies, I thought about the U.S. Marshals. Um, I, and I, you know, I thought like, I'm too dumb to do any of those things. And then, like I said, Thank God somebody else signed me up for the test. Yeah. Um, and I've I've had a fantastic career here. I've achieved, I've been in, but like you said, a bunch of different units. Uh, it's not like you're going to work patrol forever. I mean, you get to basically get different jobs doing completely different things. Um, and your pay and your vacation time, uh, your job security, it all stays the same. And so for people from other agencies, like if you don't think that Portland – would hire you like if you're a good person and a hard worker they definitely want you here um and yeah i mean going back to the federal thing it's like uh, we're both in the process of being task force officers with hsi um our unit we have three detectives that are tfos uh with the fbi um, and then the two of us are going to be with hsi so you know we're working for those agencies too what's hsi uh homeland security okay. investigations uh, and so they're, they're driving FBI cars, you know, at our office. They have offices over at the FBI, um, all that stuff. You know, I never thought that anything like that would happen to me here. Um, and I honestly would much rather work here than work for the feds. I, I don't have to worry about being moved. I know I'm going to be in a wonderful part of the country. Mm-hmm. I know that I'm going to have a great union that fights hard for our benefits. Yep. 
yeah, I just, I, there, and I mean this, this is not, there's, there's no other place, no other law enforcement agency that I would, would want to work for. It's good to hear. Aaron, John, thank you for joining us today. Appreciate it. We're hiring, continuing to hire. Uh, if you want to learn more about it, go to joinportlandpolice.com. Uh, our wages starting off entry level over $79,000. And they go top step of 113 plus on top of you get longevity and there's a bunch of pay incentives on top of all that. So thank you very much, guys. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thanks again for listening to this special edition of the Portland Police Bureau's Talking Beat. A reminder, the Portland Police Bureau is currently hiring new and lateral officer positions. To learn more, contact a recruiter or if you're ready to apply, please visit www.joinportlandpolice.com.